So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to review this. This is the 2022 Honda Civic S Turbo. So this is the base brand of the Honda Civic. Also, if you like to check out the middle and top of the line brand, the link of that will be in the description down below. So this is why I wanted to review this Civic S because of this. This is the main highlight of the S, by the way. Now, with the previous 10th generation Honda Civic, you only get a 1.8 liter naturally aspirated 4-cylinder engine. Now, for this 11th generation, if I can find the latch. So, this is its main party piece now. So, now, this base Civic is exactly the same with the V and RS Turbo. It's a 1.5 liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that produces 176 horsepower and 200 newton meters of torque so yes being the base variant now you get the turbocharged engine now this is why i wanted to review this to see if this is more worth it than the rs turbo because this one retails at the moment up before i continue on with the review I haven't done this in a while in my car anyway there's been a price increase with all of the Honda models. So formerly this Honda Civic S base variant retailed at 1,290,000 pesos. And now it's been increased to 1,368,000 pesos. Yeah, that's a significant difference. However, that is still 200,000 pesos cheaper than the V variant, the middle boy. And they whopping 392,000 pesos between the S variant and the RS variant. My favorite one though. And being the base variant, you get halogen lights here. But you, at least you still have LED DRLs and fog lamps right here and then also the biggest difference between the V and S and RS are these 16 inch wheels only there are only a few differences between the exterior as well like in the button in the door for unlocking the door if you have the key but to be honest I don't need that anyways so here the rear of the Honda Civic base variant the S it's exactly the same like in the V and to open the boot up unlike the RS there's no button here you have to do it with the button here on the door but at least it goes all the way up at least it doesn't hang about but surprisingly you still get LED rear lights here anyways and like the V variant because this doesn't have a subwoofer the total space here is 497 liters and then you have a space saver donut type tire underneath and apologies for my VNRS review surprisingly this base S van still has latches here on the side to fold the seats it's a 60-40 layout. That is the big surprise. I thought being a base variant, this will not have the folding mechanisms for the seats. And also, I didn't take note in my V and RS review, you don't have dual exhaust tips sticking out here. They're still dual, the S and the V, but they're just seen only underneath. But at least the S and V, it does give it a more cleaner look. So this is the interior of the Honda Civic S. Like the V variant, there's a lot of fabric here. It is almost exactly the same as the V van fabric here and there, but you still have the nice honeycomb design for the air conditioning vent, gloss black here on the climate controls. Same banana, 12 volt socket, USB port, cabby space, even the gear lever, the controls here and there. You only have eco and normal mode. When I drove the CTV variant, I was expecting to love that, but to be honest, I didn't like it because there are no paddle shifters, and if you put it in sport mode, it will just redline the whole way. That's why I prefer the RS variant. Knowing the Civic RS variant as well has paddle shifters, knowing Reagan of Reagan's race, shout out to him, he drove this Civic S, he had no complaints whatsoever. So hopefully this sport mode has like simulations for a changing up a gear, but if not, well, at least this is a good fight for the Civic S for me. That's just my take only. That's why I prefer manual mode because it just screams a lot if you're just in uh, sport mode. Let's continue on with the driving dynamics later on. Also, same animation when you get in the car without turning on the engine. Same materials here, the gloss black here. Cubby space and bottle holders on either side. My water jug fits here. Even the cup holders here. They fit my water jug but the plastic grips are really, really hard. So it getting out is a little bit difficult, but that's just only my water jug. Glove box is kind of tiny. It only can fit your manuals and papers of this car. And then yeah, steering wheels like the V, polyurethane, but still nice squish in it. You have your volume controls, infotainment functions on the left side, and then your cruise control functions on the right side. That was a big surprise for me. I thought they will take away the cruise control functions for this S van, but no. And then yeah, above here, vanity light with mirror. Oh no. Okay, like the V, there 
You only have the lights here above, but there's no vanity light here on the mirror. But at least there's still mirrors on either side of the visor, but they still don't extend. And but at least the visors are still fit. And also one of the biggest differences between the S V against the RS variants is the infotainment system. I mean, it still has the same functions Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but the size is smaller. It only is 7 inches compared to the 9 of the RS. And then, yeah, usual stuff here. The center console box, it still has the 3 at least. Can fit a lot of stuff there in least. And also, biggest difference between this S variant compared with the V and the RS, this is only a manual adjustments for the seats as well with the height adjustment compared to the 8 way power system of the V and the RS. And then, yeah, same stuff again here in the back. Uh, another big difference in the back, you no longer get air conditioning vents in the center. But same banana in the back. Two cup holders with the central armrest, they still fall down like that. Too low for me. And then, yeah, same fabric seats, space there, feet room, leg room, and then headroom. Pretty okay for me. I'm 5'4", by the way, despite the sloping roof design, I still fit. And then you only get map pocket on this, the passenger side, the right side only. And also, one more thing, I didn't take note of this with the V and RS variants. You can lock the whole car here on the passenger side as well. So, literally, same banana with most of the stuff here but this is the curious part why I wanted to drive this the weights of this yes the same engine throughout but the curb weights of these cars this one only weighs in at 1304 kilograms that's 10 kilograms lighter than the V variant and a whopping 53 kilograms lighter than the RS variant so the S probably means for super legera and knowing the RS is selling like hotcakes I think as well the V Everyone right now is going for this S because they don't want to wait anywhere and they just want to get hands on a Civic immediately. I, I, I see the point because of the price point as I mentioned earlier. I mean if I were to buy this, I would get the morning mist blue like the demo unit I'm gonna drive. And I assume people will buy the S and slap on RS stuff on it like the gloss black spoiler, the splitter and the rear bumper. But I won't blame you for that literally. Because you have the same engine anyways. Please don't put the RS budge. <laughs> Just saying. So yeah, that's about it. Let's go for a drive. Alright, this is it. I'm gonna drive the base van. Let's see how this compares with the rest of the lineup having given the RS already. Same complaint with the RS. It's ground clearance. It is quite low. You have to be very, very careful when you go down steep angles like this one in here in Green Hills. I'm just in drive mode. Yep, okay. This is what I like with this base van as I said earlier because of its turbocharged engine but I really curious when you put it to sport mode. And then I forgot all to show this. Being the base variant and the V variant, they have the same instrument cluster. On the left side it is completely digital then you have a analog tachometer on the right side. And then when you press Econ mode it turns green. So I'll just turn that off for now. So yeah, I also like the V, there are no diving modes, it's just this, eco and normal, eco off, eco on, that's it. Like the V, and unlike the RS, you don't have sport mode anymore here, that's why there's a blank space over here. The infotainment system, it's smaller but everything is pretty much the same. The reverse camera, I'll be honest, it's not that great. But for some reason, I can confirm now, comparing with the HRVs, they have better quality for some reason. Anyway, but this is what I like with the Civics. I know I'm just in Econ mode. Surprising there's not much delay if you turn on the Eco mode on. Then yeah, Econ mode. Wow, it just picks up. But same characteristics though with the S and this and the RS that I've given. I've not driven the V but I kind of featured it in the showroom. Anyway, is the tire noise. Yeah, I'm tra traveling what 50 kilometers per hour. It is present. Yes, because these are on Michelin. But it's not as loud as you think. When I drove the RS in SLEX uh, a month ago, yeah I don't I noticed there was a lot of tire noise. So I was expecting this to have a lot of tire noise here in EDSA but surprisingly there's not much difference it's pretty much the same thing but it's not an uncomfortable experience to say the least and yes you can feel the suspension is ever so slightly firm but it's still no means an uncomfortable car you just notice the rides just a little bit more sporty than usual notice just now 
since you don't have sport mode anymore as I said earlier you have econ on and econ off econ off is normal there's no changes in the steering feel whatsoever so the steering feel of this is pretty light but there's still good enough weight on it so it yeah it just depends on the your preference for me there's just the right amount of feel in it and also start stop traffic like here in Edsa the pickup of this is crazy like I'll just floor it now <laughs> this is what I like with Hondas in general Honda CVTs are among the best out there they are so responsive they kind of act like a automatic transmission the thing I want to find out now with this S van is its sport mode because when I tried out the CTV compared with the CTRS it was just screaming at 6,000 rpm it wasn't changing whatsoever and like this as well there's no paddle shifter so I want to know if this will scream or automat simulate an automatic upshift so let's just try that out in a bit when I get out of here heads uh, <laughs> I did notice the side mirrors they're quite large I mean they're like your typical sedan but I just noticed they're they stick far out like a city RS but this one's noticeable for some reason and then yeah you turn test maneuverability pretty easy the C pillar surprisingly not that big there's also a small rear corner window so visibility is pretty excellent here I, I did say the suspension is firm so it gives like a sporty characteristic but for some reason this is way more comfortable than the Kia Forte uh, in the Kia Forte I did notice when you go over arms and bands but here look with the Civic S it is firm but it soaks them up pretty well and this is what I like the, with the Civic compared with the Kia Forte the NVH this is it's like a one small step for mankind one giant leap for mankind the NVH here is probably as well among the best out there so let's turn now sport mode I don't have paddle shifters by the way since being the base model let's not forget that okay sport mode seems to be more eager to push forward and then let's accelerate oh my god Okay, I am sold to the seat with the Civic S. <laughs> okay, wait, let me confirm since there's no one. Okay, I'll stop here. And then, let's go. It's gonna hit 6,000, we're gonna change. There, it shifted up. Yes, that's so good. Good job, Honda. I remembered in the CTV, it just stayed 6,000 RPM constantly. It never shifted up. This one does. Okay, I'm so happy. That's what I was worried about with this Civic is that it won't change up automatically. Good job Civic! <laughs> yep. This is why I like it now. The, I understand Reagan's point now with this Civic S CVT. It's uh, among the best out there. And yes, yeah, sport mode just transforms this car on a whole nother level. Okay, I turned the corner now. I said sport mode only change characteristics when with the transmission but for some reason so correct me if I'm wrong I tend to notice there's a little bit more weight now in the steering wheel when you put it on smart sport mode here in the gear lever so it's kind of like the HRVS that I tried a few weeks ago that if you put it as the steering firms up just ever so slightly so yes sport mode transforms this car Oh my god, I love this base variant now. Now, the question is, which is the one I would pick? The RS or this? To be honest, I'm torn apart now. Knowing the CVT automatically shifts up. That's just my preference, by the way. Oh, it's, it's, up, it's up to you, to be honest. Because for me, if, I have, if I'm on a budget, of course, I will take this S. But knowing this S is really, really good already, I'll take this. But if you got all the money in the world and want to look more badass poggy yeah go for the rs i do love the kit of the rs as well so yeah i don't have a verdict to be honest s or rs i have no idea Slice. oh my gosh this thing is wicked wow you're up to high speeds in no time and yes, I did notice this immediately. As I said, it is 50 kilograms lighter than the RS brand. 
I do notice the weight difference ever so slightly in the corners. I can confirm now the S in the Civic means super legit. <laughs> so yeah, I'm stunned. I don't know what to pick now, RS or this. This one ticks all my boxes now. It's so good. So the fuel consumption reading. Again with Honda, what's with 8.4 kilometers per liter? I mean, look. I was about to say I, w I did 6.9 kilometers per liter. Nice. That was me heavy footed just around here in Guineas. But going back light footed, I was able to do 8.4 kilometers per liter. That's insane. So, that concludes my review of this Honda Civic S base variant. So I would like to thank Honda Cars Green Hill, Sir Viel, and Miss Rain, and Sir Robbie for allowing me to review this Honda Civic S. I kind of want one now. <laughs> so hope you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you with more Honda reviews coming up very soon. Bye-bye.